Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat, and today we're going to do a little envelope project. Um, I was talking to my friend Lori um, about these seed envelopes, and she was mentioning that she doesn't have any and liked the way I did that, um, one of these envelopes for Val my Valentine's journal, uh, where I put the frame over it and you could just see a little bit, and she was saying she didn't have any of these, and so I was telling her, how she could do it and stuff like that and she said why don't you just make one on a video <laughs> so um, that's kind of what I'm gonna do is make one on for you guys today um, I'm sure it's pretty self-explanatory but like if you know you're not really sure how to do it this is how I would do it I'm not saying that this is the only way or the right way or whatever this is just how I would do it if you know I didn't have one and wanted to make one so I have standard um, six and three quarter number six and three quarter envelopes. They are 9.2 centimeters by 16.5 centimeters, or 3.63 inches by 6.5 inches. They're just you know you get them at Walmart or wherever. So that's what I'm using. Um, I'm gonna cut it down a little bit for one thing. I want it to be able to open. To do part of this I'll close it when we're all done but um, and also I don't generally make a page that's this wide so I'm going to cut let's see sorry I'm just trying to think of what size I would probably want probably five so let's just cut to six off of this uh, six and or five and seven eighths how about off of this side like, yeah, let's make this super confusing, right? And if I want to come down to five, maybe I won't go quite that far. So it was five and a half off of this side, maybe. I'm trying to think, like, my pages are usually right around, I want more than that off of there. Uh, wanted to be fairly even that looks pretty even so I'm gonna cut it down to in the end let's see it's five and a quarter so that'll work because usually my pages are about five and a half might be a little bit smaller in this one though I'm just gonna take a tiny bit more sorry I'm just trying to decide what I want to do so I am making this journal as a custom order for Lori so um, I'm gonna be doing some ephemera for it here and there ah, as we go along. So I think that that'll, that looks good. All right. But you can cut it to whatever size, you can leave it the size that it um, originally was, you know, whatever you want to do. So we're going to do some collaging on the front part here. And I think I've just got some different paper that I'm kind of using in this. And this is just an old letter that I found on um, New York Public Library. And I just go to their um, public domain section and just search for things that I want, you know. So, let's see. I like how it has the 1826 over there. So how are you guys today? I hope you had an awesome weekend. I had a very nice weekend. I um, just kind of got some stuff done. I was feeling sort of um, overwhelmed and behind and stuff. And you may have remembered last week that I was kind of feeling that way. So I'm feeling a little bit better just getting things done. So this is some green masking paper or, you know, painter's masking paper that you can get. I believe this one either Lowe's or Home Depot. I think I got that one at Home Depot along with that pink one that I've been um, cutting and using. These are much smaller rolls though and you can get this on Amazon as well so you don't have to get it um, at Home Depot or Lowe's. 
trying to figure out how I want that. I think I'll do some inking. That sometimes helps me see it. So yeah, hope you had a good one. The sun is shining today. It rained, poured. I mean, not just kind of drizzled or something. It poured all day yesterday, which is a little bit rare for us. I mean, it does happen, but um, it's kind of crazy, crazy weather. I'm going to actually crumple it. This is my last full week at, the, at work at the school. So, you know, I'm excited and scared. And <laughs> like I've mentioned, it's just kind of a a full roller coaster of emotions. I've been doing that for, well, let's see, it's been ten, I ten years, and then I did preschool before that for three years. So I've been working with kids for quite a while. And I worked in an emergency department for 10 years before that. That was um, an experience that I don't ever want to relive. But anyway, <laughs> sort of makes you lose your faith in humanity at times. But, uh, yeah. Very interesting, I will say that for that job. Okay. I'm going to use, mm, that's not really the right color, let's use some of this um, Italian straw paper. I didn't have any scraps of that or I would have used scraps, but had to break out a new one. And I get this from Rachel at Roxy Creations, and that's the only place I know to find it. I don't, I mean, I don't know, maybe you can find it someplace else. I don't know. But um, I looked for it <clears throat> other places, and I can't find it, so. But if you know of a place, then by all means. I'm gonna kind of tear just a little bit of this. I don't want it to be so, such a rectangle. Although I'm probably gonna end up cutting that away anyway, but. This edge is a little straight, but that's okay. We'll ding it up a little bit. And you can do that with scissors too, or those little tools um, from Tim Holtz. And I think there's other places that make those too, if you don't. Want to do it that way? So yeah, I think it'll be nice once I can settle into some sort of um, schedule. You know, doing this full time because that will be super nice. I'll be able to feel a little more together, <laughs> feeling totally discombobulated at the moment. I'm going to take a piece. This is uh, one of my old paper digis. This is old paper two, number two. I'm just going to take a little bit off of this writing up here. Let's not do it. I like it clean wherever it has to meet, you know, like the edge of the envelope because otherwise it it's really weird, but otherwise I kind of like it to have a not perfect tear. 
This will give you, Lori, some idea of where I'm going. If you don't like where it's going, let me know now. Because, <laughs> I, well, I mean, the digi is going to be, the, that fern digi that I'm doing, it's going to be what it, you know, the way it is. But I could use different paper for it. If you're not liking the look of it. I don't want to cover that. I mean, you can't really totally tell it's 1820, but that's fun. And this, I would probably glue down as like a pocket or something, but you could also, actually I'll show you a couple ideas that you could do with it. I'm going to go ahead and ink that edge where it, it's kind of the other edge back portion of the envelope like it didn't get trimmed all the way the same stay up there just doesn't want to wants to just slide away from the scissors All right, so a couple things you could do. Um, you could seal it back up on both sides, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this because I don't need it. Look at that when it closes. I forgot that won't work. Okay, I know what to do. Um, we're going to cut it. I just close this thing. I got to remember, I keep leaving my. Um, other paper cutter downstairs because we're cutting the pink paper on the big table that we have because it's just easier but um, then I forget it all the time so let's see I'm just gonna cut kind of a, a smaller flap kind of like the ones on the seed packets themselves And then I'm just going to kind of do a, a little bit rounded, you know, edge on there. This will be tricky. I just would like them to be semi-even. You can just eyeball it and cut it if you're comfortable with that, but I am um, not always super great at that, so. I probably am not going to be super great at this, this direction either. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. And it's, see, it's totally different. <laughs> mm, this one's better over here, but we're going to make it rounded so that it looks like the other side. Okay. That will probably end up getting covered up eventually in the journal anyway, because if I put it on a page and stitch it down, um, I'll probably put some kind of paper or something over it, so it's not that big of an issue if it's not just right. And it definitely is not, so. All right, so we're gonna take some other paper. Mm -hmm. Probably something you can write on would be the best thing. Because that way, if you do it as a flap on the page, you'll have a writing space back here. So that's what I think I'm going to do. I've got this, these copies of like the inside of an old book. That other pieces. I guess I should have just done it straight because that's wonky. Let's see. We'll just do it like this. It's a little wonky coming down this way, huh? Yep. I'll put it straight against here. So I'm going to ink this. See if you measure and you're smart, then you don't have this problem. I 
And I don't want to close up this envelope yet because I'm going to need to open it. So. I usually like to put something else on these type of things anyway, just for added interest, so I'm not that worried that it's, um, you know, crooked along here. So we're just going to put uh, glue on the, this envelope part so we don't glue the envelope shut. Which I have done before, so <laughs> if you can open it up like this, that's probably a good way to do it. Uh. I do not want to glue my envelope shut. There we go. Okay, I may not even have to do anything because that seemed to work. So, um, there's that. We can still put some on there for decoration though. and put like a piece of this along here too. So I'm just going to glue it straight on there. Just so it's not, that blue behind there kind of bugs me that's inside of those envelopes. I mean if I was doing something with blue then it wouldn't bug me but I'm not. <laughs> strings from that that scotch create is it's a fairly wet um, glue stick but that's why I like it because you can move stuff around for a minute and it um, sticks really good in my opinion I mean I have had no issues whatsoever with stuff sticking with that so I really like it so what I'm gonna do is cut a hole in this using my little cutter thing like that and it's just a die uh, let's see if I have the package for that it's a Sizzix Thinlets and it's the I don't know if you guys can see that I'm going to take it out of here it's the 662694 and it's Tim Holtz alterations so and I don't even remember where I got that one. I've had it for ages. But you, I'm sure you probably get it on Amazon. <laughs> Here's my ugly old machine. And you're really not going to be able to see this. But I am going to open it because I obviously don't want this back part cut. I just want this front part cut. So I'm just going to cut a window kind of, you know, midway sort of thing. Like this. And it's going to, you know, clunk and bang and make all kinds of crazy noise because that's what mine does. I, some people I see do them and it hardly makes any noise and mine's always like crack, snap. <laughs> Sounds like things are breaking. My kids are like, what are you doing? So 
like uh, just die cutting. And I'm going to go through twice. Sorry, I know I'm shaking the whole table. I apologize. It's sort of impossible not to. Okay, so there's our hole. And we can save this and use it for a journal uh, tag or card or whatever. Whatever we want. Okay. And then I took a larger die and I just took one of those acetate packages like you know this kind of thing and I put it flat down with both sides of the bag and then I just die cut it so I have two pieces and I'm gonna put this little piece of fern in here and I got these little um, ferns I think they're real dried because if those are paper it's fairly impressive I gotta say but I, they're super fragile so I'm thinking they're the real deal. And I'm going to ink around this butterfly a little bit because he's white on the back. It's just one that I printed out. And lots of, um, I know lots of people are doing these as die cuts. I know Rachel just put out some. I think I'm going to put just a few little very small dots of glue on this and on the butterfly just to kind of hold them in place. I mean, I don't think they're going to go anywhere once they're glued between those two pieces of plastic, but I just don't want to, it would stink to have it fall some weird way, but I don't want to see it in the front. So I'm really just barely. barely doing it. And then I'm just going to set it on the first piece of acetate. I guess I should figure out kind of sort of centered. Because I want to see the whole thing, right? Okay. And it's not going to matter what it looks like on the back. Oh, you know what I just realized? We're going to have to cover this too, because otherwise we're going to see that. <laughs> what do you mean that doesn't look nice? I don't understand. All right, let's see. What can we cover that with? I have this. Something that would look good behind there, though. Like Maybe this, because it's nice and bright. That way it wouldn't get dark. I mean, you're going to see whatever you're putting in and out of the... Um, envelope it more but when you don't have something in there I don't want it to be that ugly blue you know whatever I'm just gonna glue this right down onto here there's a side that looks rougher than the other and I tend to like the rougher side out I don't know I don't know why I just do Trying to see where the fold in that is. I should probably have inked that first. Because that's kind of important for the gluing and being able to fold this again. There's always things that come up while you're doing these. Do you know what I mean? Like you think you have it all planned out in your head. And then there's always things that you're like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> so weird. But I guess it's good to see all the steps here so then you're prepared for that when you go to do it. You know, if I would do it first, that would help, but um, I barely have time to do it in the first place. So, And this doesn't matter really because it's not going to be seen, this part. The good part about this is it really strengthens this if you are going to use it as a pocket or whatever. When we close it, we'll see that instead of that icky blue. And this I'm going to glue in there like that. All right, so let's do a little inking right there. Put the lid on our glue and the pin in our glue. 
so we don't dry it out entirely. Okay, now the trick will be to get this in here right. There's little fuzzes of, you know, pieces of bits of paper. So I think I'm going to glue the top one down first. I'm really hoping this will hold. I think it will, but maybe I'll go around here. I really don't want um, glue on the acetate if I can help it. I mean, I can wipe it off when it's wet, but. And if you just want a window, like, you know, the seed packets were, if you just want the window itself, then just put one of these. You don't have to do the double layer thing. It's just I wanted to put the butterfly and the fern piece in between, so. Um. And I've discovered if you push your glue away, you're less likely to have it come out into the acetate where you can see it. So that's kind of what I do. And then at the top where it might catch on stuff as it goes in and out of the envelope, I put a little bit more just to kind of seal that top edge so that hopefully whatever you're putting in and out doesn't isn't constantly just catching on there. And then this one we can just kind of figure out where we want it. And if they don't meet up completely perfectly, it's not a big issue. Because again, you're not going to see this part. I almost did it upside down. Or, you know, this way. <laughs> That would have been brilliant, but I wouldn't put it past me. So it's sort of like a little scientific plate. Uh, but see, the glue, the glue. So I'm gonna have to get a wet wipe and pull that apart and try to get that off of there. we don't want that. I put too much glue. I mean, you want it to stick, Amy, but you don't need 10 tons doing it right there. So put very little glue. How's that? Because now I'm just making a mess. Okay, let me get that on. That one wasn't the cleanest. I had ink on it. And I don't have all day to <laughs> mess around. That one had too much stuff on it. Let's see, I want to get, let's just pull this up for now because I'm going to end up with it stuck somewhere, I can tell. Very little glue. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's probably why I don't do a lot of acetate because I'm a crazy gluer. But it goes show. We all mess things up and they can be fixed. You can't see me. I'm um, just wiping the extra glue off of there. Okay, I think it's good. 
So we're just going to put a little all the way out here, and I think it will be fine. That still looks sloppy right there. Ah, sorry. Feel free to fast forward. <laughs> I fully understand. Okay, let's hope I got it looking better now. Hmm. I'm pretty much wipe off all the glue on this piece right here. So we can put a little more on the envelope. Oops. Let's not break the fern while we're at it. You guys were probably telling me that's too much glue. <laughs> One spot just doesn't want to clear up. Okay. Come all the way out as far away as we can. And just a little line. Sorry, I'm trying to see it in the light because I don't want it to be a mess. Don't get glue on your acetate. which you probably all know, right? Lori's probably like, why did I want you to make me a journal? <laughs> Sorry, Lori. You can tell me to leave this out. <laughs> messed up it looks. Okay, I think it's good. All right, just do one more little wipe over the top. Make sure there's no spots where, yeah, like right here. Okay, there we go. So that is that. That was rough. I apologize. I usually don't make it that big of a mess. All right, so when you hook it on a page, like pretend this is a journal. 
if they weren't all glued together right then you can just do this type of thing and fold it over onto the other side but since it's so it'll hook on like this you can add fabric or lace or whatever and then it'll sit there it'll open you can put something in the pocket and um, you know use this for writing so that is that one and then I was also thinking how long do we have we're at 35 I will be making a journaling card to go in there, but right now I want to work on I got one of these. I got the Tim Holtz um, photo booth people, and I thought it would be fun to cover this, and um, I'll show you what I want to do with it. This is just that craft paper that I've coffee dyed and crinkled up and all kinds of stuff, so that's why it looks like it does. I like these with this thing right here and I'll I won't cover that one. So let's see how much do we need? Let's take a little bit away. You're not going to see this upper part anyway in here, so as long as I'm not covering up that hole, that's really all that matters. I mean, I don't have to come up this high. I could come down lower too, so which is what I might do. Take it down to there. Move my book. Make around the edges a little. Yeah, I just thought this is kind of a fun thing that you could use, and, and it's sort of like using up junk mail. And I know a lot of people have done, I'm not the first one to do this, I know that. And I'm, I'm not the first one to do those kind of envelopes either. <clears throat> They're just fun. Fun to do. I'm going to use this color paper. I got this from um, Cindy at Chopwood Creations here on YouTube. She sent me some Happy Mail, and it had this lovely um, Asian origami handmade paper in it. So I'm going to use a piece of that because it'll go good with our fern sort of uh, thing. Well, I guess I'm not using that. So I'm not hoarding it. That's a, that's a good sign because that's what I usually do. Let's see. doesn't want to cover that completely down there because I ripped that piece off that I needed. That we can put something else there. And a lot of it's going to be covered, you'll see, in a minute. That's what I say, right, for all of my boo-boos. <laughs> you can cover it up. <laughs> Super, like, fine, thin sort of paper. It's a really cool feeling. I like the paper fibers in there. I just have some coffee dyed. I mean, it's not that big of a deal if you see the background on this, because at least it's a kind of a brown or a tan color, whatever. I ordered my cat. I just heard him go. 
he he sighs like an, at appropriate times, like when he's irritated with you or something. He sighs like that, and um, so we just always laugh because he's always going <sighs> at all of us. But <laughs> um, I he's been bored lately. I was telling somebody, and I may it may have been on a video. I don't know, but anyway, that he just is being naughty like he just it's like he's got cabin fever and he is being naughty and so he gets up on the counter well I think you guys all heard that story and got the apple and all that but um anyways and so I told my husband last night I'm like he needs something to do so I ordered him one of those crazy flapping fishes I don't fish fish if you've seen them on um Instagram and all that so I ordered him one of those, and we'll see how that goes. I don't, he's just been being a turkey. He's driving me crazy is what is happening. I want to cover this, but I don't want to cover that hole, and, like, cutting that out or something would be not fun to do. So we're going to just see what we can do here. It's going to be kind of like covering an envelope, basically. We're just going to have to kind of go around that and hope that we get it covered. I want to keep that. Not that it's necessary, I just like the way it looks. I think I just like covering things with torn paper, pretty much. <laughs> it's my thing. <laughs> I'm just going to go around the back with that. But I know lots of people are liking that right now, so I know I'm not alone there. Mm. to the edge there. Yeah, this new um, digi I'm making is kind of crazy. I hope you guys like it. It's different than what I normally do. I mean, it's still collaging and stuff, but it's just kind of a different... It's a little grungier than my normal. I think I'll just wrap it around the back again. I probably will be covering the back up as well. Need a new piece of paper. Just gonna kind of do that. <laughs> Just make it keep that shape. I love those photo booth people. They're super cool. If you're new to um, all this stuff, I don't know. I mean, Tim Holtz. These have been around for a while, but these are Tim Holtz's photo booth. Kind of like his paper dolls, you know, along that line. But super fun. Love those. Got to figure out something to do with those. Here's this little skinny piece. Would it fit right there? I think it will. We're going to try it anyway. This is a little bit different green than that other. That other um, is a little bit more of like an army type green. I don't think I like this quite this long. Half of it stuck to my finger more than the paper. So I'm just kind of going to push that in there with my nail, try to get the extra bit away if I can. Of course, the part I didn't want to rip off ripped right off, and that doesn't want to. There we go. I just kind of pulled it through that side. I 
Then we need another little piece over there. Use some of the writing off of this because it got a little blurred. These are my um, vintage ads that are in my Etsy. They come out of a um, real Virginia and Truckee Railroad book that I have, an old one from the 1800s. It was a directory book. I can't wrap this around because it's... Uh, <laughs> Um, it'll seal that shut, and I don't want to seal that shut. Use these that I already got glue all over. I could do that. That works. And then I think I'm just going to kind of ink up here because I'm not that worried. Like I said, there's that um, sort of brown color under there. And some of the fibers of that paper are coming down there. So we're not going to worry about that. And then we'll do something on the back here. I could use my... This. I don't know what to do about that hole again. It's always the hard part about these things when you um, try to cover things, but... You know, you want some portion of it it's still there, but it's an odd shape that you can't just like punch a hole or something. I have a punch like that, but it's not. Well, these are my ads to the colored ones. Um, it's not quite that big, so that's not going to do us any good whatsoever. Maybe we'll just scoot it down and kind of do like we did on the front. It's probably going to be my best bet. guys haven't had a chance um, some of the people on my design team are Denise at one of our crafts and she's making a Valentine's journal using my digi and you know some other stuff too and um, uh, Dee Dee Farago and I'll put links to their stations uh, she's making a Valentine's like a little mini journal in a really cute um, pie box she found like it had like pot pies mini those little pot pies and um so she's doing a valentine's journal and Allie just did like some cool pockets and things using that digi and uh, gail who's not on my design team anymore she used to be but um she's been making sure she's starting a valentine's journal as well that's cute and she used the vinegar valentine's in one of her old journals that she didn't finish <clears throat> and it, they look really cute in there so yeah it's just kind of fun to see what everybody's doing and I thank them so much because oh my goodness they're amazing ladies all of them Gail included for sure she's helped my just helped me period <laughs> end of story <laughs> she's just such a nice lady and Of course, Denise and Allie, who have been with me from the very, very beginning. Love them both. They're both amazing ladies. So talented. And Dee Dee's fairly new to me, but she is amazing as well. And I thank them all for their hard work. I appreciate every bit of it, because I know hours that can go into some stuff. Pretty impressive.
I mean, look, like what time we're at 50 minutes right now and gotten two little things done. <laughs> it's kind of mind boggling sometimes when you get thinking about the time that it takes. I mean, it's fun, so that, you know, that's good. It's just that it's crazy. Crazy. I'm just going to take this all the way to this end, I think. I'd appreciate them for sure. And I didn't ink that, but it's okay. I'll do some inking after I get. I've got to figure out how to get that little part. I wonder if I can get that with my punch, probably. Let's see. I'm probably not going to be able to get over there, though. I didn't do it, it just made a weird dent in it because it was still a little wet. If I waited till it was dry, it probably would work. It did help lift it up, though, so I can snip it at least. Be a lot easier to forget about the little shape, wouldn't it? But that's no fun. have an easier way to do this and are yelling at me to stop. <laughs> Just stop lady, I don't know what you're doing. Okay, so let's see here. This looks a little wonky. Ah, finger stuck to that. So I think I'm just going to trim that off. Sorry, I'm just trimming. Sorry, my belt squeaks on the when I lean on the table. Okay, probably all ready to pull your hair out, huh? Some things just take a minute, or 50. Okay, so I think that's good. And I'm not worried about the perfection at the bottom. I kind of like those pieces just hanging down there like that. I'm going to ink around this a little bit more. And then this is something we've all seen done loads, I'm sure. But if you're new, you probably haven't, so this might be something fun. Um, these are kind of fun for, like, happy mail or stuff like that. So I'm just getting out uh, pieces of paper that I have, and I'm just going to kind of do this. So um, Lori was telling me she wants like a glue book, you know, to glue things in. So um, I don't really want to rip that daffodil down there, but I'll tear down to here. So I thought it would be fun to just put in some pieces of paper that she can cut and glue or do whatever with, whatever she wants with in the journal. So let's see, we'll just kind of stack some different papers in here. And I'm not going to ink them or anything because, um, you know, that way she can tear them and do what she wants with them. And she can ink them if she wants them inked or whatever. Whatever floats her boat. I'm use some Tim Holtz paper. I mostly want this bottom section. I just think it goes with what we're doing. 
And so each one, um, I kind of will get progressively smaller sort of thing so that, you know, you can kind of see them when they're stacked on each other. And I'm not going to worry about tearing that bottom edge because, again, she's going to tear these or do whatever she wants with them. this cool fern kind of design on it and a lot of these are graphic 45 Tim Holtz they're just scraps that I have left from projects and you can do some different size ones You can throw in this writing script, whatever you want to call it. This is one of my ads. I should put this one like right here. And then piece of straw paper, if I can tear it. And do a piece of this. Flies. I cut that one butterfly out of there. Let's see. leave the white at the top so that I can staple it in there. So let's see, can we fit two? Let's try to fit two. If I can cut, that would be great. one I'm a little worried about because I'm afraid I'm going to get that butterfly so I'm going to tip it a little bit and here I did um, worried about these and I'm going to end up covering up that back one anyway but that's okay because you'll be able to see the other side so it's fine now oh, these are a little wide I'll take a little bit more off the side it's not like it's just real exciting right here So she can use these however she chooses. I'm probably going to have to move these butterflies over to one side so that I can actually catch them with the staple, if I can get the staple through all this. <laughs> uh -uh. And this is maybe something that just goes with, because, um, you know, I don't know if it's going to fit in the journal itself. Ah, I did it. Yay. And there we have it. So that's that. So I hope you guys can see that. So sorry about the struggles with the uh, acetate. You know, the struggle is real. It's, it's definitely real with me. So, um, yeah, but two little ideas. And um, I, it, Lori, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Let me know what you're thinking. <laughs> and we'll chat soon. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. Bye-bye now.